Hi, everybody. It's time for your 20 minutes with Miss T. This is going to be our new video series that we are going to do at practices. So hopefully you're in your debate class right now watching this with your coach and all your teammates. And welcome back uh, to Cebudo in 2017. I'm super excited about everything that's to come this year. So um, we're just going to have a lot of fun. And um, we're going to start with our first practice. Again, welcome back to all. We're really excited um, for the new year. You know, 2017 is a new year. That brings new cool. That means that there's going to be new things happening at Cebudo. Um, and also just that we need to know what you want to do at Cebudo. Um, so this year, we're going to be doing a lot of reach out of asking students and debaters what it is that they think they should be using debate for, how can we teach uh, the best skills, and what it is that you need. So we're going to start um, this year with some resolutions. Um, but before we get to that, every uh, 20 minutes with Miss T that you will do, we'll start with an old business and a new business. That way I can, on video, put out all of the dates, trips, uh, opportunities coming up, deadlines uh, to the whole league. And then if there's follow-up or feedback, folks can feel free to reach out to me independently and or your coaches have this info in the emails and all the papers that you'll see on the video now. So um, within our first five minutes will be my goal uh, right now, my count on my video says 130 that I've been introducing so I'm gonna pause right here and go straight into the old business and new business so that we can have more time for our activity at the end of the video um, so first old business old business um, starts with our very first sheet that we gave you guys which is your permission slip um, it looks like this one um, it will have your school name here. This is the Silver Creek one. It has your coach's info. That may be changing. If it is, then we'll make sure to edit that. And then it has the dates. That's the first page. It could have been, it could have been double sided or it may be two sheet. This is the page that I need from everybody. This this is your um, student information sheet for Savuto. It has our con um, contact information for you, but it also has like parent signatures. It has your photo release and all of the things um, that would allow you to participate with us and go to events um, coming up in 2017. And we literally have um, some outside event outside of a tournament every single month coming up to summer camp. So you really want to get this in. Uh, we had, I believe, one school complete our challenge to get these all in, and they are owed a ice cream social. Um, we are extending that con uh, contest only to January 31st. Oh, no, let's make it January 28th, <laughs> the workshop. If you could bring this, not this side, but this piece signed to the workshop. If you have not, if you need a copy from your coach, they should have that. Please get it from them. That is the first piece of uh, old business. The second piece of old business, but it's kind of new business, is our new calendar. This will also be given. out to everyone it has everything from january to june um but keep in mind that our summer camp is in july right now we're looking at the third week of july july 17th through 22nd so put those dates on a save the date somewhere we're going to send out info for that soon but this calendar is going to be your go-to once you get it again from coaches print it out put it in a notebook hang it up on the refrigerator this is every single date that we're going to be doing right now listed for student leaders this is super important our student leader trainings will start monthly um, and they're listed on here they will be fridays they will be either online and in person um, and so student leaders need to look out for that also women's association is going to be happening in um, several of the months and then we also have our varsity um, trainings and car cutting uh, parties that will happen that are on here. So as soon as you get the calendar, make sure you check that. And then the last thing I wanted to review is our eligibility and division sheets. Now, this is kind of new business too. It's a great transition in um, from old business, but at our very last tournament in December, Aaron Thomas Invitational was the last, or sorry, was the first time <laughs> that we had varsity. So now that we have a varsity division and we want to make sure everybody knows all the eligibility requirements and things that go along with that, they're on this sheet. This can also be handed out to you. Coaches have it, but I'll go over very quickly with us together. Um, first of all, we have that novice is right here, and I don't know if you can read this box, but it says original analytical arguments. In other words, those are arguments that you've written by yourself, things to answer, stuff that you've heard in rounds and all that. And the question is, can you use those? 
Novice can, JV can, varsity can. Anybody can use analyticals. We encourage students to write their own arguments to things that have already been created, like to cases or plans or things that you're hearing. Any of those are available. Those are original analytics. Um, next would be new, art, new evidence, and those are articles, um, files, any kind of thing published by Savuto. So Savuto will um, update um, topicality files, politics files, other counter plans, and those are things that we'll publish from the league out. If you see here, only JV and Varsity can use those published files. Novice has to stay within their novice packet. If we increase or add onto the novice packet, we will let you know, and then that would be available. Um, next, multiple cases and off-case arguments. Um, so that is also JV and varsity. That just means that novice students are still only running the human rights case for right now. And it means that they are not running um, critiques or counter plans right now. Um, we are adding those and that will come, but for right now, only JV and varsity are allowed to have those two things. Um, so if you are in one of those, there are multiple cases. The multiple cases for JV and varsity are up here. Uh, for JV, it is Zambia, Space, and Human Rights, and that's listed on this paper. Now, the only difference between JV and Varsity, if you see on a little chart, there's only one thumb up, okay? The only difference to JV and Varsity is right here, this box says original, affirmative, and negative files. That means that if you are a Varsity debater, and Varsity means that you've been debating with us for at least a year and a half, you've debated a full year's JV, and you are on your way on to varsity. Um, that means you can write your own cases and files, and those do have to still be approved by the league, but they are eligible to be running around. Um, so, novice debaters, brand, brand new students, first year of debate, have not gone to three tournaments or more in which they have ranked in the top 10. So in other words, if you've been to three of our tournaments and you've gotten any awards over top 10, you are no longer eligible for novice. You are now a JB debater. If you are brand new and you just showed up, don't worry, you got a whole year to stay a novice. If you have uh, been with us, um, let's say you started summer camp last year and you've been with us for the half of the year and you have not ranked in the top 10, then you can stay in novice. However, you are eligible to move up to JV now. Right now, what it's looking like is novice will be our very brand new people who show up the day of, they've never had debate, they are new to it, and their rounds will be learning experiences. Our JV students who have been with us since at least summer camp and have done at least one or two novice debates already, and then our varsity students that were JV all of this past year and are now ready to move on to varsity. Um, so that's just that piece, just to clear it up. Um, so that is the end of old business. On to new business. Definitely new business. January workshop is the 28th of this month. So it's the last Saturday in this month. And it's a unique workshop in that we're going to learn some other forensic and debate activities. We're going to learn how you compete in poetry, how you compete in an activity called duo in which you act out um, a scene with your partner, how you compete in Congress, which is an actual competition where you learn congressional policy uh, bill writing and action and depositions and how you build those and then how you compete in spoken word prose and other events, um, original oratory, where you write your own 10 minute and 12 minute presentations and you present those. That's what we're gonna learn. The stations will be the same way as we rotated our very last workshop. So there'll be five rooms with these areas in it and everybody will learn a little bit about those in each of those to help prep for the new year. So we're looking super forward to that. You can sign up today, um, tell a friend to tell a friend, bring a friend, um, and we're gonna have a great time on Saturday, definitely. Of course, as always, food, transportation, and fun is free. Okay, and then um, upcoming trip opportunities, I wanted to go ahead and talk with folks a little bit about that. This uh, week, January, the week of January 9th is our first week of practices across the board. So most of our schools, even if they got back in last week, are just starting. Um, so our first thing that we will have um, as a league is actually going to be on another holiday, and that's Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, Martin Luther King Day, celebrated on January 16th. Um, students in varsity, as well as students that are student leaders, will be invited to the Sabudal office for a uh, day of service and fun and, and exchange. Um, and so we will be looking uh, for those students on the 16th. 
Um, we also have a Kirkland and Ellis law firm deposition visit on the 20th, which is an opportunity to go to a law firm and see how they do depositions, um, sit in on some of those and their 45 minute sessions in which the lawyers actually debate about the cases that they're running, look at research and pull up some of the main points of things that we're doing. So it's a really good way to hone in some of those debate skills and how they can be used in real world jobs. And then last and of course, certainly not least is our workshop on the 28th. So we are having an exciting month coming up. We're getting all of our student leaders on board. They're going to help make sure our practices are tighter, things are um, engaging, and that we are keeping more students around. Our goal uh, this season is to grow our league. Every student bring one more student by the end of summer so that our summer camp um, this year is awesome. So we're excited about that. Um, and with that, that ends the first portion, um, our old business and new business. So... <laughs> I said to break debate breath. You take a breath after your 10 minutes. Um, all right. So for the second half of this video, um, as I give folks a moment to transition to get all the thoughts in their head, what I would like people to do um, is think about the New Year's resolutions that you heard. Think about things that people talked about. Um, think about things that maybe you thought about or a resolution that you have for yourself. Um, and that's going to be our focus for today's activity. Um, what we're going to be looking at uh, for this week and the next week is expressive language, how we can be more expressive when we're speaking, how we can engage people, use our words, use our body language, use our hand gestures naturally, use our positioning, use our faces and our eyebrows and our everything to be more or expressive, um, but also more persuasive while you're speaking. So we're going to focus on that this week, um, and we're going to use our own resolutions to do that. So I'm going to walk you guys through the activity first, explaining things, and then I'm going to actually disappear out of virtual world. What I like for you to do with your team is go through this activity with the resolution. So I'm going to start now and explain it, um, and then folks can you know, work at your own team's rate. Um, some teams are doing this activity in a one day kind of event. Some teams are breaking this up into two days, some days for uh, brainstorming and um, thinking and getting down the templates, and then the second day for presenting and feedback, okay? So, first and foremost, um, think about if you've ever made a New Year's Eve resolution the night before New Year's Eve, um, what it meant to you and why. And if you have done that, the activity that we're going to work on is going to have us not only create New Year's resolutions, we're going to create three um, separate ones for ourselves. We're going to create one that is tied to um, our personal development um, and debate. So for instance, my resolution um, regarding this one would be that <laughs> the new director of programs at Savulo, Trina Smith, will significantly increase resources and materials to coaches to support after school debate practice. That it would be my resolution. Now, why on earth did I say it like a debate resolution? Well, that's going to be part of how we connect it. All of your resolutions that you write in this activity should be formulated like a debate resolution. Um, debate resolutions come from the word resolved, which just assumes that something should happen. It should go forth. And anytime we say the resolution, what we're doing is assuming that it should happen. And so our resolutions will be things like that. We assume they should happen because what we want to do is assume that there's some good merits to those things. And so when we look at debating the resolution, <laughs> we can look at debating the resolution as a political action, the United States federal government. So there's a body. That's why I said the new director of programs at Savuto, which is myself, right? I created a body that will take the action. Will should be involved in it, of course, because it means it implies some actual movement. And then what the action will be, significantly decrease, significantly increase, create partnerships, work collaboratively with whatever it is, what the action is, and then what is the outcome of the plan? So the body, the director of programs will significantly increase, and then what it is, resources and tools for debaters and coaches um, in Seville, right? And so you're going to create your own debate resolution. The first one, again, is about your personal um, improvement in debate. The second one is going to be about your family or friends, so some interaction that you want to have with people outside of yourself. And then the last and final one will be about school or your future career or just something about your future. 
Um, and with those three resolutions that you're going to take a moment, what we're going to do then is write a speech. <laughs> so affirmative constructors are about five minutes. This speech should be up to five minutes. I'm saying telling people to go somewhere between three and five to really give yourself a push and a challenge. But the main challenge of this is to be expressive. Just imagine if I had to talk to you about this, like this, for the past 20 minutes. Right now I'm coming up on 1515. It wouldn't have been exciting. I was not expressive and I was boring. <laughs> that is not how you should debate. This will be all about expressing these speeches, expressing these resolutions, working on natural hand gestures. Some of you like to debate like this and so people see all this stuff happening. Or you do this and you're talking and you're waving. Or you're like this and you're like, oh yeah, and then the thing. That is not expressive debating. When you're wanting to persuade someone, everything about your body language, how it's moving, where it is, what your head is doing, what your eyes are doing. I know I have on my prescription sunglasses and I saw you can't see my eyes as well, but are your eyes on the listener? Are your audience connecting with you in that way? A few tips as you think about these, um, and there is going to be a rubric attached. So your peers will help go over your speeches with you and your coaches have that. But here are my last few tips and I'm going to wrap up so you guys can go ahead and start the activity. Tip number one, be aware of your body language. Okay, I was the girl in debate that wore the jingly bracelets and the coal earrings and all this stuff making noise. And then I was flailing my hands and talking about how things were bad and this and that and that. And my judges were like, girl, you are driving me nuts. Be aware of your body language. Be aware of your position. Be aware if your laptop is in front of you like this while you're talking and the, and the judge can't see you. Second, Recognize when you start to relax when you're speaking. If you notice that you start to do this and go down in any way when you're speaking, you're probably doing the same thing with your expression. Third, use hand gestures wisely. Don't flail and do all this stuff and oh, and it's just a fantastical thing unless it's called for. If you're trying to place emphasis on something, that may be a chance to put a hand up to the side to point out that it's there. If you're trying to get people to understand with you, you might say, listen for a moment and come to you to give your attention. Be careful about those gestures, make them natural, and practice. Last and finally, because um, I challenged myself, and I will challenge myself every 20 minutes to set a trusty debate timer with 20 minutes on it. So I have two minutes and 30 seconds left. Challenge yourself to think about the fact that your facial expression and your voice intonation are a part of your body language. Again, if I just talked to you like this, I kept my voice a certain way, I looked over here, I pretended like I wasn't interested, you may not be as persuaded by me. If I'm giving you eye contact, if I'm using my facial expressions right, and if I'm putting intonation in my voice, what you'll get is a more expressive speech. So don't forget those tips. You can review them in the video anytime you want. If you need any more info, feel free to reach out to me at T Smith. S-M-I-T-H at S-V-U-D-L dot org. And as always, I am ready and willing to make sure that you guys are making smart cool. So I'll see you um, soon at the workshop. If I haven't seen you already at your practice, make sure you are telling new members about it and you are being an active part of the debate team community or school. I hope your New Year's resolutions go well. I'm going to go start working on mine and I hope everybody has a great rest of their week. Bye. Oh, and I had a minute and 22 left. <laughs>